Hello. Welcome back to Coffee and Trailers. I'm Worth, and this is the breakdown to Marvel's Episode 2, What If T'Challa Became Star-Lord? Now, if you're new to the channel, I will be doing weekly breakdowns of Marvel What If episodes, so go ahead and subscribe now so you can check those out. Now, what makes this episode sad is that Chadwick Boseman did do the voiceover for T'Challa before he passed away. And these episodes that he's going to be in with this one and three more episodes is kind of a cool homage. And we get to see the last performance of Chadwick Boseman playing T'Challa, which is kind of cool. Now, both Peter Quill and T'Challa are both taken by Ravengers in 1988, with Peter Quill having the more tragic story as he's listening to one of my favorite songs, I'm Not In Love by 10CC. Not in love. So don't forget it. His mom passes away and he runs out of the hospital and that's where Yandu finds him and he's taken away. Now in T'Challa's version, he's just exploring when he comes across the Ravenger ship. And then we find out that Yandu left the task to Kraglin, played by Sean Gunn and Taser Face. Taser Face! <laughs> You know what would be a really kick-ass name? Taserface! Both versions of Star-Lord starts off in Morag, with Peter Quill getting the Power Stone so that he can sell to the Collector, and T'Challa's version of Star-Lord wants the Power Stone so that he can help restore the Krylorians' planet. And the Krylorians are the pink-skinned people like Karina. Now we have another similarity that just goes in two completely different directions. Now, Korath does return, and he is voiced by Jaiman Hansu, but with Peter Quill's version of Star-Lord, he just didn't know who he was. There's another name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Who? But with T'Challa's version of Star-Lord, he is the equivalent of Michael Jackson to him. Star-Lord! I'm a huge fan of your work. What are you doing here? That was not the reaction I was expecting. It really reminded me of that scene from Coming to America when Akeem's going to the bathroom and the guy comes in. He's like, oh, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It is you. I cannot believe it. I feel like we should be bowing. I mean, unless we should be kneeling. And it's just that my boss, Ron. Super, super intense, but I could be convinced to make a career change. Korath still works for Ronin, but he's willing to change sides. And as intense as Ronin was, I don't blame him. In the bar, we learn a lot more about T'Challa's Star-Lord, with the biggest theme being him talking Thanos out of going after the Power Stone. And how exactly did you stop Thanos, the mad titan? I'm a big enough man to admit when I'm wrong. T'Challa here showed me there was more than one way to reallocate the universe's resources. Now, I don't know what the hell T'Challa said to him, but he said after a good conversation, he can admit when he's wrong. What the hell did T'Challa say to him? It's, I bet you T'Challa could sell stripes to a zebra. Another thing we learn is that Drax, who's not voiced by Dave Bautista, is a bartender. And the reason he's a bartender is T'Challa stopped his planet from being taken over by the Kree invasion. And that's where he lost his wife and kid. So now his wife and kid is around and Drax is a bartender. Who would have thought? Let us take a picture to send to my wife and daughter. I would prefer... Ah. Oh, we should take another one. You look terrible. I look Karen Gillian comes back to voice Nebula, and this version of Nebula has long blonde hair and not necessarily an issue with her dad, but kind of workable issues with her dad. And she's the one that introduces the embers of Genesis, which will help heal entire planets by just an ounce of it. So another thing that happened because of T'Challa because he decided to have a conversation with Thanos and talk him out of it. Now the collector has become some big criminal kingpin. And now the Black Order works for the collector instead of working for Thanos, like he did in Avengers Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. I have tons of memories of the actual 
movie of Howard the Duck. One of these days, I'm going to have to do a breakdown of Howard the Duck because it's been quite a long time since the last time I've seen it. All I really remember from Howard the Duck is how Leah Thompson was trying to bang a duck. And then that little monster thing that came out with the little weird pink tentacle things. Yeah, ah, man, I'm going to have to go and watch Howard the Duck because of this. Instead of Spider-Man and Iron Man coming up with some cool plan to rescue Doctor Strange in a alien movie type of fashion, Ebony Ma is killed by Karina. Shot in the back. So then we get the triple cross. Nebula and T'Challa had a plan underneath the plan. And Nebula ends up being the one to kill Corvus Glaive instead of Vision killing Corvus Glaive in the movie. And she also kills Cole Obsidian and saves her dad Thanos. Who would have thought? The final fight between T'Challa and this version of the Collector, who's super jacked up, has a few Easter eggs in it, with the first being the hand he punches T'Challa with of a chatty Cronin. And what is Korg? Korg is a Cronin. So I have a feeling that he killed Korg. R.I.P. Korg. He uses Malekith's dagger from Thor 2. We see Thor's hammer and Captain America's shield and I'm going to assume because the Collector has those weapons that these versions of the characters aren't alive anymore. He has Hela's crown and he uses those necro swords. Oh, that woman has faced a necro sword, courtesy of the Asgard. And I have a feeling the next time we see a necro sword is going to be in Thor Love and Thunder, which is the weapon of Gore the God Butcher, who's played by Christian Bell. No way in hell I was going to leave here without my kid. Yandu references T'Challa as his son, and they have a moment. And he had the same kind of moment with Peter Quill, but he had to sacrifice himself in order to have it. I didn't do none of it right. I'm damn lucky you, my boy. T'Challa's dad is still alive, and T'Chaka was voiced by... John Connie, who played him in the actual movies. And John Connie also voiced the younger version of T'Chaka in Marvel's What If. Thanos is with Cosmo the Space Dog, and he's talking to Okoye, making jokes about genocide. That sounds an awful lot like genocide. No, 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 because it's random. Uh-huh. And I might add, efficient. And then we see a shot of Korath trying to game up Shuri. And we find out that Peter Quill works at the exact same Dairy Queen that was in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. And he's visited by his father, Ego the Planet, who's actually voiced by Kurt Russell. And Jeffrey Wright lets us know. Spare a little time for dear old dad. Too bad this might spell the end of the world. But that's a story for another day. So what did you think? Have you been watching episodes of Marvel's What If? And what did you think about episode two, What If T'Challa Became Star-Lord? Now, this is going to be one of the more special episodes of the series, just because it's Chadwick Boseman's final performance as T'Challa. And he will be in three more episodes, and I will be looking forward to those. So why don't you go ahead, leave me a comment, and let me know what you thought about this episode. And as always... Until next time. The one is free, Pete. Can't nobody tell me ain't that guy. I'm back to the future, boy. I'm McFly. Ah.